chapter six. Some dog food, Whew, it's eaten. On Sunday, Waldo's bowl was still full of food. Hmm, maybe the food had gone bad. It had been in his bowl since Wednesday night. Marvin took the bowl into the garage and dumped it into Mrs. North's garbage can. He returned to the kitchen. He found some green dish soap under the sink. He washed Waldo's bowl. Then he rinsed it a long time so it wouldn't taste like soap. He dried it with a dish towel, which he found in the drawer next to the sink. Waldo watched him. He filled the bowl with fresh dog food. Here you go, he said, setting it down in front of the old whisker-faced dog. Waldo didn't even look at it. Marvin picked out a piece of dog food and held it in front of Waldo's nose. Yum, yum, he said. Waldo turned his head away. He whined. Marvin sat on the kitchen floor and stroked his back. I'll tell you what, he said. If I eat it, will you? The bit of dog food was still in his hand. Marvin opened his mouth wide so Waldo could see. He took the bit of dog food between his thumb and forefinger and held it inside his mouth. He was careful not to let it touch his tongue. He quickly pulled out his hand, closed his mouth, and swallowed. Yum! Delicious! The dog food was hidden in his fist. Waldo wasn't fooled. Okay, said Marvin. I'll really eat it this time, but then you have to, too. Waldo watched him. Marvin touched the dog food with his tongue. It wasn't horrible. It tasted a little like cereal. He bit into it. It was chewier than cereal and a little bit gritty, like it had tiny seeds in it. He chewed and swallowed. It wasn't gross. It wasn't something he'd asked his mom to get for an after-school snack, but it really wasn't too bad. Okay, your turn, he said. Waldo whined. Like this, said Marvin. He crawled to Waldo's bowl and picked out a piece of dog food with his teeth. He chewed it up and swallowed. He smiled at Waldo. Delicious, he said. Waldo lay his whiskered face against the floor. Chapter 7, Liver. Have you tried liver? asked Dr. Charles. Yes, my mom made it once, but I didn't like it, said Marvin. I mean, for Waldo, said the doctor. Oh. It was Monday afternoon. Waldo still hadn't eaten, so Marvin called the vet on the telephone. Mrs. North had left the number. Dr. Charles said Waldo probably just missed Mrs. North. He told Marvin what to do. Go to the store and buy a quarter pound of liver. Boil it in water for ten minutes, then cut it up in little pieces. And serve it to him on a real plate, Dr. Charles added, instead of his doggy bowl. That made Marvin smile. Okay, he said. Thank you. Waldo's a funny dog, said Dr. Charles. He's not sick, just lovesick. Let me know what happens. Marvin hung up the phone, feeling a little bit better. He sat on the floor next to Waldo and petted him. We'll both be glad when Mrs. North gets back, he said. He had a rough day at school. Miss Hillway treats me like I'm a criminal, he told the lovesick dog. Waldo pushed his head under Marvin's hand. Marvin petted him. Nick and Stuart hate me, he said. They say, I think I'm better than everyone. I don't think I meant better than everyone. I just have a job to do. Waldo licked Marvin across the face with his big tongue. Marvin petted him some more, then stood up. He checked to make sure the key was in his pocket. I'll be back after dinner, he promised. With liver. He tried his best to sound enthusiastic. His mother said she'd take him to the store after dinner to buy the liver and then drive him to Mrs. North's house. Can I come? 
asked Jacob. I've never seen the inside of a real teacher's house. Sure, said Marvin, glad to impress his older brother. Me too, said Lindsay. I want to meet Waldo. Marvin's father went along too. I don't want to be a party pooper, he said. Marvin smiled. After all his troubles, it felt good to have his family with him. He paid for the liver out of his own money. A quarter pound only cost 37 cents. It was kind of nice. Less than a candy bar. Inside Mrs. North's house, Marvin found a pot and filled it with water. He turned on the stove. His mother offered to cook the liver for him, but Marvin said, No, it's part of my job. He dropped the slimy meat into the boiling water. Jacob was walking around the house. Cool, he said as he went from one room to another. Lindsay hugged and petted and rolled around on the floor with Waldo. Mm, I love you, Waldo, she said. The liver was stinking up the kitchen. Marvin let it boil for ten minutes like Dr. Charles said. Then he flicked it out of the water with a fork and cut it up into bite-sized pieces. He really didn't think it would work. He had tasted liver, and he had tasted dog food. He liked the dog food better. He put the liver on a regular plate and set it on the floor. His family gathered around to watch. Look, Waldo, liver, said Marvin. Waldo didn't move. Please, Waldo, begged Lindsay. She pushed the plate to him. Waldo sniffed at it. Then he stood up, stuck his head over the plate, and ate a piece of liver. Marvin and his family cheered. Yay! Waldo ate another piece, then another. He didn't stop until the plate was empty. Then he waddled over to his dog food bowl and ate all his dog food, too. All he needed was an appetizer, said Marvin's mother. Marvin was so happy. He almost cried. He washed and dried the pot, knife, fork, and plate. Lindsay had to use the potty. Of course, thought Marvin. She couldn't go anywhere without needing to go to the bathroom. He smiled. He knew the kids in his class would be glad.